We start in the 3D visualizer. Um, I think it's probably best if I show you how we put the stage together. So if we go sorry, to visuals first, I'm going to put the house lights on, ambient light. And what I might just do is take it off advanced mode, which is going to help our runtime on the program a little bit. And I'm going to turn that light off because it's sort of getting in the way. No, I'm not. All right, no, that's fine. We'll just work around it. So, made it a bit bright in there. So, as you can see, we've got a stage with Mr. Pretend DJ. Um, and we've got some rigging with the speaker units. And then these green marked items here are our lighting fixtures that we've that we're going to be using. So I'll just show you how I made this happen. Now we're in um, design mode. So <coughs> what we'll do is we'll start with the stage and the, um, the trusses. So we've got our speaker arrays here. Um, and these are all, uh, these all of these objects that I've used come standard with Lumen DMX. So, um, what's the best way? What I might do is open up some new trussing and I'll show you how we did it. So, if we want to add a 3D object. Now, you should find this in your installation folder. So, mine's installed under C Luma DMX, which I think is the default. And then if we go to libraries, we've got models and objects. So here is our library of different objects that we can put in. So let's put in a piece of truss. 30 by 30 by 40. Yeah, that's good. Cool. And we'll just so like that, see that's it there, sticking into that speaker rather funnily. So say we wanted to put um, an extra bit of truss under here. So we select it, and here we have the coordinates that the, um, that the object is sitting at. So you can see, I don't know, what I'm, this is a really good tool when you're placing objects, if you focus on the selected object. So now we're always going to be pointing there. So I can move it forward and back. Down. What we might just do is, and then maybe we want this actually to be vertical. So we're going to do the rotation by 90. And then we'll pop it up against the back wall here. Just check that it's actually on the ground. Cool, so now we've got a bit of trussing. Um, so that's all I've done. That's really the method that I took to build our whole framework here. So you'll see uh, these are all just individual pieces, and I just had dragged them into position. That was 9.6, and now it's back. And I've just done that with everything. So we've got a little kind of uh, stepped stage here. And that was loaded in. Um, we've got the little desk. And there is really heaps of stuff, so if we go and load something else, uh, I quite like some instrument. Let's pretend like this DJ can play guitar. So, or how about a grand piano? Okay. 
Okay, just a little focus on the grand piano. Oh, where is it? Oh. Yeah, right under this stage. So maybe we'll uh, just pop this off to the side because maybe our DJ is going to do a little uh, piano concerto after he's finished his trance music. <laughs> so again, we'll just make sure that it's touching the ground. So you'll probably hear from my really loud mouse that my favorite way of moving stuff around is to click in the box and then use the um, rolling wheel on the mouse, but it's totally fine to um, either use these buttons here to go small steps or you can type in the numbers. So for example, one of the things that I did for the trussing quite a lot is because it was symmetrical I would duplicate the object so if I duplicate this piano we've now got two in that same spot and if I was to just take out this minus then you'll notice it's basically come to the exact same point on the other side um, so that's a really really useful way it's basically what I did for building all of the truss. I position the bottom one and then duplicate it and cop, you know, uh, change the um, location in these files here just so that it was the exact opposite. And you can see I've made a pretty square and sturdy truss because of that. And then, uh, yeah, maybe we want to turn that piano around. So I think it's this wall. Oh, that's the wrong rotation. 180 in that direction. And we've got ourselves a couple of pianos in the corner. Um, and it's possible to uh, change the scale of these as well. So it's a very wide one. Now it's gotten taller and deeper and now we've got a double sized grand piano which uh, for a grand piano is maybe not necessarily so useful but um, things like stages and trusses uh, it really helps you to get them the size that you need them nice and easily um, and it is really great to put all your trussing and stuff in there because you're able to uh, output a um, a plot view of um, all of these of of this whole setup. So really, what I would be able to do is go into my room that I was going to set up for the gig that I'd been planning, and I could um, basically just print this off as a plan, give it to my engineers and they could build all of these trusses and add all of these lights and then really all I'd need to do would be um, plug in Luma DMX to the demo packs and push play and really wish we'd be away laughing um, and that really is one of the the main benefits of um, software over having a hardware desk is I'm just able to plan so much more um, by doing it in this way. <clears throat> so that is kind of the the gist of how to how to put a stage together. It is quite uh, important that you get your your room size right, like I showed you before. So um, because once you start to change that, like if I was to grow the height of my room, you'll notice that happens in all directions, so my floor has suddenly uh, dropped away from beneath the feet. Now actually, if you are um, good about how you order things, now I've actually gone and selected all of the objects, I think, oh, not the crowd, but all of the other objects, um, and then we have these actually these same positional 
tools for everything. So I could actually bring everything back down to ground level. And now just our audience must be a good show because our audience is flying. Um, but I can select them as well. And, oh, no, I don't want to make them smaller. And here's another nice trick. So if we go to these all objects, oh, actually, no, it's forgotten it. Get that. Um, so we'll bring the crowd like back down to their feet as well. So as you can see, it is possible to change the size of your room, but it's kind of just generally easier to, to figure that out as you start. Um, so I'm going to put that back actually, I think. I have eight meters. So simple as, I just need to put them back to zero. Back up to 2.5, and now we're all back to how we were. Um, so, now I've showed you how I put in all the trusses, but really the important part is getting these lights involved. Um, so now we've got all, these are all of the lights that I'm using for my show. And well, basically they were added in a fairly similar way to how I've shown you to add the objects. Um, so we'll just do some more. I'm going to put some parkans in at the back, just in case anyone gets bored and wants to look <laughs> at the back of the stage. So we're going to add a 3G, 3D object and those are the same buttons. Um, sorry, no, the 3D objects was the stage and the truss. What we want to do is add a fixture. And hopefully they're going to pop up. So now what we've got here is on the left, we've got our fixture library. Um, so you can see there's a lot of lights here from a lot of the, the biggest makers in the world, you know, you can go into Elation and all of these are all different lights that they make. And they're all included in the program. Um, so hopefully, if you own some lights, um, hopefully we've got it all in here for you, ready. Um, but if not, as I said, it was the scan editor function is really easy um, and maybe if anyone's looking for a tutorial on that you can post a comment and I'll see if we can get a tutorial done for the scan editor but really it, it seems like a pretty straightforward process you just gotta tell it how many channels it needs and, and what you want those channels to control 